All right, we're gonna go over J14, which is the beginning of factoring polynomials. So we have many, many different ways we can factor polynomials, um, depending on how many terms they have, right? So if they have two terms, we're looking for sum or difference of cubes. If they have three terms, we're gonna use something called the sum product chart or the AC method. If they have four terms, we're gonna use grouping. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different types of factoring that we're gonna go over. For this section, we're just gonna focus on our first step, which is always, always, always to look for a greatest common factor, okay? Always, anytime you start factoring, before you look at the number of terms or care about anything else, you wanna see if there is something that all the terms have in common. Are they all divisible by a number? Do they all have the same variable? And if they do, we wanna factor that out or divide that off of each term first. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at that and then we're gonna look at four term uh, factoring, okay? So first let's look at greatest common factor. Greatest common factor is always our first step <clears throat> when factoring, okay? So when it says factor out the largest common factor, I'm looking for, and we abbreviate this just by the way, GCF, okay? Greatest common factor. So I'm looking for, are both terms divisible by something? Do they have letters in common, right? So both of these numbers are divisible by five and they both have X's. So that means that our greatest common factor here would be a five, and the maximum number of x's I can take out before one of the terms runs out of x's is x to the fourth, right? Because once I've taken out four x's, this one has no more to give. So I can take up to an x to the fourth out. So now it didn't just say what is the greatest common factor. If that was the case, that would be our answer. It said factor it out. So anytime you see factor out, that means they want you to write what you're taking out, which is our 5x to the fourth. And then in parentheses, we're going to write what's left over once that is divided out of every single term. Okay? So if it helps you, you can write that 5x to the fourth underneath each term. Okay? So you can think about dividing it off. So 25 divided by 5 leaves us with a 5 x to the fifth divided by x to the fourth leaves us with just a single x, right? And then over here, 15 divided by five, that's gonna leave me with a negative three. And then notice I took all the x's out of that term as well. So that is the most that I can do with this term, is just take out what they have in common. So we just leave that and that's our solution, okay? Let's look at another one. Same thing here, we're gonna look at everything they have in common. Looking at the numbers, I can see that they're all divisible by nine. So I know I'm gonna have a greatest common factor of nine, and then I look at the letters. I see A's, B's, and Z's. So notice, they don't all have A's. This middle one doesn't have an A, so I can't include A in my greatest common factor because that's not something they all have in common, right? B's, I have B's in every term, and the most B's I can take out without running out of B's, right, is this B to the first, which is in the first term. So I can take out a B, and then they all have Z's, and the most I can take out before running out, right, is Z squared. Okay, so now that I know what my greatest common factor is, I wanna go ahead and write my 9BZ squared that I'm dividing off of each term, and then in parentheses, I wanna write what's left over once I've taken that out. So again, if it helps you, you can write your 9BZ squared under every single term so that you can see exactly what's left over when you take it out, or you're welcome to do that step in your head. I'm not gonna require that you write that down, okay? So on our first term, 81 divided by nine leaves us with a nine. We didn't take away any A's, so we still have our A squared. Our B got divided off, and two of our Z's got divided off, so we should still have a Z here also, okay? As our middle term, looking at it, our nine got divided off, so that leaves us with just a negative one, right, or negative. And then one of our B's got divided off, so we still have a B. And then both of our Z's got divided off, okay? And then for our third term, 27 divided by nine leaves us with a positive three, right? We didn't take any A's away, so we still have our A. Um, our B got divided off here, 
So we have one B left, and then our Z's both got divided off. So we should be left with um, 9A squared Z minus B plus 3AB um, as our leftovers, right? So we're going to go ahead and circle that. And there's two for you to try right below. So go ahead and try those out. Um, pause the video, and when you're ready to go over them or if you get stuck, play it and we'll go over them. Okay, let's go ahead and go over them. On the first one, you should have a greatest common factor of 3. Once we take that 3 out, what we're left with is x minus 8, right? On number 2, our greatest factor should be 2xy squared. And when we divide that off of all three terms, that leaves us with 2x cubed y squared minus 6 plus 3x squared y. Okay. If you need to spend a little bit more time, go ahead and pause the video. Make sure you have that down. Um, also, I wanted to, to just mention, if you want to check your answer, the best way is to just multiply it back out. So if you were to take this and distribute the 3, that would give you 3x minus 24. So it's a good way to check yourself um, if you like to ensure that you didn't make mistakes. Okay. All right, so that is greatest common factor. So no matter what, anytime we factor, day or night, <laughs> okay, we always start by looking for a greatest common factor. Then once we found our greatest common factor, what we're gonna look at now is how to factor what's left in the parentheses, okay, the leftovers. So determining how to factor our leftovers is based on how many terms we have. So we're going to look at four terms, and when we have four terms, our factoring method is to use what's called grouping, okay? So that's what I'm going to show you here on the next page. All right, so again, before we get started, we want to look for a greatest common factor. We want to see if anything is in common for all four terms. So here, they don't all have the same letters and they're not all divisible by the same number. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write over here, no GCF, okay? There was no greatest common factor on that. So since there was no greatest common factor for the whole thing, I'm gonna use what's called grouping, which is where I group two terms together to make two pairings. And I'm gonna look for a greatest common factor just within those two, okay? So 8x squared and 10x are both divisible by 2, and they both have an x. So if I take out a 2x, and again, you can write it under each term if that helps you. Just remember, you're dividing it off. So 8 divided by 2 leaves me with 4. x squared, I divide off an x. I'm left with um, a single x, right? Negative 10x divided by 2x gives me negative 5, okay? So all I did was find a greatest common factor for those first two terms. Now I want to do the same thing on the second two terms. So 12 and 15 are both divisible by 3. So I'm going to take out a positive 3. Make sure you tell me what kind of 3 you're taking out, either plus or minus. Um, and we'll see why we might want to take out different signs, um, like a negative sign on another example. Okay, so for here, we're going to go ahead and just take out a positive 3, and they also have y's in common. So I'm going to take out a 3y. And remember, when you take this out, you're dividing it off of each term. So again, if you want to write it below, you sure can. So 12 divided by 3 leaves me with a 4. I also divided off my y, so I'm left with that x that was there. Okay. When I divide negative 15y by positive 3y, I'm left with negative 5, okay? So the reason that we did this is, one, we didn't have a greatest common factor for everything, so we group. We make these two pairings, and we see what can I take out of these two pairings, right? So once I've taken what I can, what I'm hoping for is that I'm left with a common factor that matches, okay? So notice, this is one huge term, and now this is one huge term, and if I look at these two terms, now that quantity is the greatest common factor, right? Between these two terms, that quantity is what they have in common. So I'm gonna do it just like I would a normal greatest common factor. I take out what they have in common, and I write in parentheses, what's left over when I take out that common factor. 
So if I take off this common factor, I take off this quantity, this term is just left with a 2x. And I take off this common factor, this term is just left with a positive 3y. Okay, and now I am completely factored. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and circle this. Again, if you wanna check it, all you have to do is distribute this all out and you should end up with what you started with, okay? All right, so let's look at another one. Look at another one that we can do grouping with. So this one has four terms. First thing I look for is the greatest common factor. And if I look at all four of these, they're all divisible by three. So my greatest common factor is three. And I can't take out any letters because they don't have common letters across all four terms. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my three because that's my greatest common factor. And then in parentheses, I, I write um, what's left over when I divide off that common factor. So if I divide off a three here, I'm left with just AB. If I divide a three off here, I'm left with negative six A. If I divide a three off here, I'm gonna be left with two B. And if I divide a three off of um, 36, I'm left with negative 12. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a star. Anytime I have a greatest common factor, I like to put a star. That way I don't forget to put it on my answer. Okay, so for now I'm just gonna kinda ignore that three and I'm gonna focus on these four terms. And I'm gonna go through this grouping process again. Okay, so I look at the first pairing and then the second pairing. And I wanna try to just pull out a greatest common factor of just that first pairing. So what these two terms have in common is an A. So I'm gonna write out what's in common and then write in parentheses what's left over if I take out that common factor. If I take A out of this term, I'm left with B. If I take A out of this term, I'm left with negative six. Okay, and then I wanna do the same thing for the second pairing. What do these second pairing have in common, right? Well, they're both divisible by two. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna take out a positive two and then I put in parentheses what's left over when I divide both of these by two. Well, this term I'll be left with a B, and this last term I would be left with a negative six. So you can see again, I'm left now with two terms that have a common factor, right? Yay, yay. We want that to match. If that doesn't match, then maybe we did something wrong or we need to revisit it again, okay? So now that these two terms have this common factor, again, I wanna take out the common factor and write in parentheses, what's left if I take B minus six off of these terms? Well, this term is gonna be left with just an A. This term is gonna be left with just a positive two. And now I am fully factored, okay? So again, always look for greatest common factor first. Oh, I said that and then I forgot to put it back on the, ah! Put it back on the front, three. <laughs> Practice what you preach, Miss Williams. <laughs> okay, so we look for our greatest common factor first, right? Take it out, and then if we're left with four terms, then we go into this grouping. The idea behind grouping is that when we take out a greatest common factor, hopefully their leftovers match. Then we take those leftovers out, um, and that determines our other term. Okay, and then put your greatest common factor back on the front. So there are two for y'all to try at the bottom of this page. Go ahead and pause the video, and then when you're ready, we'll go over them. Let's look at number one. Number one, there's no greatest common factor, so we go ahead and go straight into grouping. When we go into grouping, you can see the first two have a Y in common. Now, a common mistake made on this problem is when you take out this Y, Remember, you're dividing it off of each little term. So when I divide a y from the first term, I'm left with 2x. When I divide negative y by y, any number over itself ends up being one, okay? So we're left with 2x minus one. Same thing on our second pairing, they have a five in common. And when I divide each term by five, I should be left with 2x minus one. So whatever you take off, okay, if you have two terms here, you should always have two terms left in your leftovers, okay? So some of, some of you I know just got 2x, make sure you had a 2x minus one, okay? The terms don't disappear. Now that you're left with this common factor, you can go ahead and take it off 
and the factor that you're left with is a y from the first term and a 5 from the second term. Okay, let's look at number 2. Number 2 was a little bit different because we had a greatest common factor of 4, so we want to take that out first. When we take 4 off of every single term, we should be left with 2ax, ay, negative bx, and negative by. Okay. And then we can go ahead and go straight into our grouping. So in the first grouping, they have an a in common. And when we take an a off of each of these terms, we're left with 2x plus y. And so the idea is we really want to have the same leftover whenever I take out my common factor here. I want to be left with a positive 2x and a positive y. And right now, both of these terms are negative. So the only way to start with two negative terms and be left with two positive leftovers is to take out a negative common factor. So they have a b in common, and so I'm going to take out a negative b. That way when I take these two negative terms and I divide them by their negative common factor, I end up with positive leftovers so that these two quantities match. Okay. Now that these two quantities match, I can take them out and I will be left with a from the first term and negative b from the second term. Okay. So this is my factored um, version of my four terms, but remember I had a greatest common factor of four, so don't forget to put that four um, back on the front. Okay. So that is the end of J14, which is factor polynomials, so you should now be able to complete that one in your MyMathLab course software. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.